In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. I'm recording this video because um, I had a dream last night. The dream that I actually had is lines up exactly what the Bible says about what's gonna happen. I just had a really crazy encounter with Jesus and I really wanna share it because I don't wanna forget. It was very distressing. Hi, I'm Gary Greenlee. During the last few years, a phenomenon is taking place where people all over the world are having rapture dreams at an increasing rate. These are just some of them. I had a dream last night that the rapture happened. The dream was short, and this is the last one I've had. I've had many, but this one specifically was terrifying. On these very uh, uh, nights, I was asleep, clearly, and I uh, dreamt. Uh, in my dream, though, it, it was like I was in a field. It was a bright day. And it happened so quickly. The Bible says in a blink of an eye is when Jesus is coming back for his children. It starts off, I'm in a house that I'm working at. I am a contractor, I own a contracting company. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm, it's in the middle of the day. I'm standing in the, the master bedroom and all of a sudden the blinds are down, but I could see the light coming in, it starts to get dark, darker, darker, darker. You know, things were just going as normal. I think there was a conference or a show or something. We were there in the field and everyone was having a good time. And all of a sudden, the sky started to shift. I go into a vision and I see Jesus. And he's walking in front of me in a, in a, in a robe that's white. And, um, it happened so fast, and uh, I remember that I was left behind. And what it sounds like is uh, the loudest rumbling that you could ever imagine is so loud. It, it felt like the, the sun was coming closer, but there's a big light, it's bright, and people were looking up and just confused, not knowing what's going on. And um... so I, I wiped my eyes, and I'm like, uh, Am I, is that really what I'm seeing? Jesus, is that you? And I looked again and lo and behold, it's Jesus. And um, I got this sense of urgency that he was leaving me behind. And I, I got afraid and I didn't like the space that was between us. I seen couples taken, which I thought it was only like one or the other. I thought it was just like, the husband stays and then the wife goes or uh, the wife stays and the husband goes. But I seen, a, you know, couples go as well, husband and wife go and, you know, with the rapture. It like vibrates to your very core and shakes you or you can't even speak. It's so violent. It's like an earthquake in your body. And I, I can't ca catch up with him. And um, and I got this sense of urgency, like he's leaving me behind. <laughs> like he's leaving me behind, like, like I was a little kid and, you know, and I was watching my dad like get in a car and leave me somewhere and knowing that he wasn't gonna come back. All of a sudden, it felt like lights just kept on lifting up. 
you know like for you those of you who, who's seen star trek you know when they say beat, beat me up things like that it was like <laughs> people are just going up going up going up as exactly as the bible says one was left and and one was taken And my husband was taken with our children, um, and I was left. And when I was left, um, I was beating up myself in a way, not physically beating up myself, but um, mentally beating up myself. I kept saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer, why was I not raptured? And I kept saying, were they more holier than I Were they more holy than I was? Is that why they were taken? That they had a better relationship with Jesus than I did? I'm crying. I'm like, I'm crying like this. It's like I'm running towards Jesus. <laughs> and, I'm, and I know that my, my soul and my spirit is crying out, don't leave me behind. <laughs> don't leave me behind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the space I let get between us. Don't leave me behind. I was with my son. You know, he's eight. Uh, we started lifting up at the same time, and it was like the speed. You know, how we were just going, and I was like, "See, it's happening." And people were just some people around us were going, "Oh yeah, you know, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening." And I looked up, and our Lord Jesus Christ was right there in the cloud, where. The blinds weren't open, but I could see it getting darker and darker until it was almost pitch black. And then the noise stopped. And then all we heard was screaming at the top of people's lungs all the way around the house. People were screaming, screaming, screaming so loud. It's terrifying. I wasn't even outside and I was terrified. And then all of a sudden, light. And as I went up, I went as close to him. I think I stopped by where it is. He gave me a hug, and as soon as he did that, I found myself back, kind of like floating a little bit midair, and I, I was like down, down to where the earth is. But I wasn't really on the ground. I was kind of like, you know, just midair, but I could see everything that was going on. And my mind was saying, you know, why did I just stop? You know, why am I, why, why am I not just going up? Because everyone around me it was like just zooming past me, like zoom, zoom, everyone was just going like light, white lights. That's what it felt like, thousands of it. And I looked down and there was chaos everywhere. I'm able to catch up to him and he finally turns and he looks at me because he hadn't turned his head the whole time but I was running after him and and he held my hand he said come and walk beside me and so I held his hand and he said my heart is that not one would be left behind <laughs> from them as if I never knew them. <laughs> I just kept questioning myself and questioning God. I was like, why didn't you take me? I love you. I, you know, you're my Lord. You're my Savior. Why didn't you take me? I'm a Christian. But you couldn't even see in front of your face in the dark before the light came. I woke up so fast. I was so scared. And this is the second time I felt unworthiness unworthiness and um i remember that satan himself was in front of me he was like like standing like a man and he was so handsome that in my dream i was like he is sexy it was like crazy but he was like a man but you know really you know handsome man and he was very nice in the beginning of my, you know, after the rapture, he was nice or whatever. And then he started getting mean. 
and controlling and he will not leave he will not leave you alone like physically every, like i what i kept trying to do was my whole mind my whole focus was why was i left here what do i need to do to get god back because i want him to take me to heaven there was dead bodies all over the place i mean people just went berserk you know when when people just felt like you know people were just killing each other running into each other accidents everywhere i mean people just felt they ought to kill people and it was just cops people just stepping over cops and it was chaos screaming and running around and i was like so grieved in my spirit i said why am i seeing this i'm supposed to be i've gone I, you know i'm supposed to have left this place or maybe the, the lord just wanted me to see it and he said he said in the hearts of man i've placed a hole where my love belongs and that the only difference between those who already love me and those who don't love me yet is that the ones who don't love me yet don't know that I'm the love of their life. <laughs> and that they're the love of mine. And he said that he's coming back. He's coming back and it's sooner than we think. And that's the only explanation that I can have and to explain exactly my experience. And from that very point on, after the whole thing, I woke up. Jesus said, when he comes, he'll roll up the sky like a scroll and toss it aside. That's basically how it felt, uh, being in the room and then it just going completely dark slowly outside until it was completely dark. Then all I heard was people screaming at the top of their lungs, scared of something. I can only imagine what they were looking at, which is probably Jesus. And he's describing it as, it says in the Bible, men's heart will fail them at the sight of this. And people be trying to hide in caves under rocks but there will be no hiding from Mr. Jesus. And it just freaked me out. And I was just, in my mind, I didn't think about anything else, but why wasn't I taken up? Why was I left behind? What do I have to do to get back to God? And I kept trying to pray and close my eyes and pray. And every time I tried to, Satan came. Just imagine like a man keep coming in front of you. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's unfathomable. I woke up feeling so scared, praying to God, forgive me for my sins. I mean, I do it anyways already, but the feeling is so frightening, you cannot imagine it. I also remember that right after the rapture, the weather started changing and going crazy. Like the wind was so strong that the buildings were falling. And, and it doesn't make any sense, but it, but, but that's what happened. It was like, it, the weather just was not normal. For all the people out there, whether you know Jesus or you don't know Jesus, he's coming, he's coming. And it's sooner than we think. And we have got to change our minds. We've got to get away from all the petty distractions and the cares of this life because they're all corruptible. They're all gonna fade. You know, when the, if the world burns up tomorrow, it's not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter at all. It's not gonna matter. And your house is not gonna matter. Your freshly mowed yard is not gonna matter, okay? Like that, that petty offense that you keep between your brother or your sister to keep from, from exposing yourself to, you know, pain or rejection or whatever. It's not going to matter. He said men's heart will fail them 
at the sight of this, and I can only imagine that that will happen to 80% of the population. It has to. It is so terrifying. What's gonna matter is gonna be whether or not you know Jesus and whether or not you're close to him and whether or not your family knows Jesus and whether or not they're close to him. I was not cursing God in the dream. I was not, I was not um, looking down on God or anything like that. I was just kind of like a child longing for their father. Like, where's my daddy? I want to be with my daddy. I don't want to be here. I feel like I'm left alone. So I repent, God, I repent. I ask that you forgive me. God, I ask that you forgive the church. <laughs> I ask that you forgive your bride, God, for not being prepared, for allowing the cares of this life and, and comfort and, and our opinions and our self-righteousness and our pride and our egos to rise above the preeminence of who you are. Remember I told you I was questioning God? He spoke to me in the dream. And he said the reason why I wasn't taken up was because I had lust in my heart. And he showed me the lust. He showed me the lust. Like, like you know, like how someone plays a movie. He showed me the lust that, that was in my heart. To me, it was scary because I want to be with God and I want to go to heaven, I want to be raptured. And um, it doesn't feel good to be left behind. And I am scared right now. I am scared for the body of Christ and where we're at. I am scared for the world at large. Jesus is coming and I don't want to be left behind. And as I've said before, there are so many dreams like that happening every single day. There is a sense of urgency now that we just cannot hold on anymore. We need to spread the gospel. We need to reach out to, 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 to those who've never known Jesus, who've never heard of Jesus before. And by the grace of God, if I'm talking to you and you're listening to this right now, don't push it back. I've done it as well. We need to just be bold and go out and minister to people. We are called to spread the gospel and it's, it's now as a matter of urgency now. There is no time to wait. There is no, no, don't worry, I'll do it tomorrow because tomorrow might be too late. It's, it's kind of like a dream of warning. Like, check yourself, Erica. Check yourself, whoever's watching. Check yourself, check your heart. And there's a lot of things in our heart that we don't know we have. So what the Holy Spirit does, God the Father, Jesus, what he does is, because they're three in one, and what they do is they come and they warn me and they warn you and they say look this is what's in your heart fix it pray it out in the root from the from the root pray it out get delivered because that is a hindrance from you for entering into heaven we can't come to god and with any with anything that's unclean so we have to pray it out, get delivered from that, and be set free from it because God is obedient to his law. And if his law says you can't come into heaven with an unclean heart, you can't come in. You just can't. I just knew if Jesus came down, you think you can be prepared, but you're never going to be prepared for what's going to come. Because he is almighty, all righteous. He does no wrong. And you might think that you don't. You might think you're in a perfect place and you're rapture ready, but you'll never truly will be rapture ready if you ever felt any inclination of feeling unworthy. That feeling feels terrible. <laughs> terrible. Regardless of what uh, people think, the idea of all these things is very there. It's clear for everyone to see. There's dreams everywhere. 
It's just non-stop. God is pouring out His Spirit upon the people to let them know that the time is near. And we're very at a very precipice of it. If I'm saying rapture is imminent, it means the time is near. I'm not saying I'm not putting a date on it. I'm not saying it now is tomorrow. I'm just saying that because the level of how people are coming with different, different ways of, of rapture visions and dreams and so many ways. God is speaking and we need to take heed to that. There might be a timeline through the process of rapture, but our personal time, there is no guarantee to it. Our directive right now is to get people as much as possible to repent as soon as possible because we don't know what's going to go on tomorrow. No one can guarantee that they're going to be here tomorrow. So if you die tomorrow or now, right now, the time's up. This is about as humble as I can get to the world. I need you to share this video. I need you to share this video. I need you to make this go viral because it is a warning. It is a warning to the church. It's a warning to the world. He's coming again soon and we have to be ready. You don't want to be left behind. When he comes back, you want to be caught up by his side. You want to be in his confidences. You want to be wrapped up in him. Because on that day, I'm telling you, on that day, I'm telling you, <laughs> we got to get our focus right. We got to get our, our priorities straight. Oh, Jesus, help us. Oh, Jesus, help us. I have to go now. Please listen. Please listen. And so I feel like when he warns me with those dreams, it's out of love. Because he doesn't want me to go to hell. God doesn't want any of us to go to hell. We're his children. And that's why Jesus came. So he can save us and we can have a relationship with him. So I want to thank Jesus for, for showing me that, for revealing, the, for revealing that in my heart, and also to share with others that we need to pray that God reveals what's in our heart that's unclean, and that God reveals it so that we can fix it. And um, no one's perfect, but we do want to be like, we do want to be like Jesus. We want, we want to be pure, and we want to remain holy, and we don't want to fall. But, um, yeah, I wanted to share that. My husband suggested that I record this video, so I'm doing it. Thank you for watching. Um, anyways, I wanted to get this uh, dream outside or out there to y'all, and <clears throat> this is my very first YouTube video, like I said. Again, my name is Warren Walker, and that is my dream. There are so many ways we can minister Jesus to people. You don't have to go shouting and screaming in the town centers and stuff. There's so many ways we can chip in in a conversation and just get people to know the signs and the times and what the Bible says about it. And I bless you brothers and sisters for all of you that have been posting that God Almighty will continue to give you more wisdom, more vision. He will continue to guide and protect you. Don't be afraid of what the world might throw at you. It will come. There are going to be people who's going to really hate you. Some will even attack you. Some will spit in your face. Smile about it because there's a crown waiting for you. Thank you for listening. And God bless you. 
for those of you who think, oh, how, how am I going to do it? I pray that God will give you divine strength and wisdom and understanding. He will give you the spirit of boldness for you to be able to go out and just do it because that's his commandment. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Bye-bye. When I was talking, this massive, really loud trumpet covered the whole sky. And it was so loud, and we were all so scared, we sat down on the ground and we held hands. And I knew that it was time and I was going to be taken and my parents were going to be left. It was just like I saw a figure of a man. And, and now I just started saying, oh my God, it's Jesus, it's Jesus. And I just billowing and then they parted. And then I saw like a Jesus like figure in the clouds and then I started lifting up. I started to lift up. It's like gravity was shut off. And all of a sudden I looked at my feet and my feet were literally floating up. And I was like, And this trumpet was so loud, like like it was so loud. Like literally everyone in the world heard it. You could not miss it. As I was standing there, I heard a loud sound of a trumpet. And it, and it blew for, for, for quite a while. But this one was like very, very low, like a, like a blow horn, like. So I'm sitting there and I hear this noise in the sky and, it, and it's literally like a trumpet and it's so loud. Feel like God is speaking to you right now? The Bible says, seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him while he is near. God is desperately, desperately wanting a relationship with you. And the good news is that Jesus came to give you the opportunity to have that relationship. If you would like to know God, please pray with me. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner in need of your grace. I repent of my sin and I ask you to please forgive me and come into my heart and be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we would love to talk with you. You can call us at 727-535-PRAY or visit us online at ctnonline.com forward slash prayer. If God has spoken to you today, share the good news and remember to keep watch because we don't know the day of our Lord's return.